Craig, I want to know how you feel oh, as a Miami Dolphins fan about this image. Yes. Oh, what? what? <laughs> Because Laramie Tunsil shared this you know on his Instagram is? story. Full, he posted that? Yeah. Th- this is a screenshot from I've his never Instagram seen this. story. That, first of all, love the screen share moment if we're allowed to do that. I don't see why not. It's a public thing. Yeah. That's interesting. We don't make any Good. money. <laughs> well, not even that. I just like, how interesting is that? We've had so many times where we're like talking about a player or talking about draft order. Why not just share the screen because we're using Zoom? And now the viewer would be able to see that. Cut that out if whatever. I'm just saying, wow, this is a, a, a moment of like that. There's some value in showing some shit as we're talking. But holy shit, I didn't realize he did that. I Someone heard... made it. Someone made it, but he reshared it in his Instagram story. But kind of amazing that, you know, you probably <laughs> should build the statue to Tunsil, given the fact that he's given you four first round picks, that's... two second round picks, and one third round pick. You're teeing me up for success here because that's what I was saying. There's people doing good business in football right now and people doing bad business. And I'm so stoked that Miami is on the good business side of how they moved and shook things around the last couple of years and have all this equity that they look like they're finally going to wield. Because it kept looking like, okay, you're bringing in these assets, you're bringing in these assets, but you're letting all the goodies go. Right, you let Minka go. You let you let Tunsil go. What what's happening here? But this year, the it's starting to look like there's a there's a bit of a process to it, and I think we're gonna get a few dudes that are gonna change the game, are gonna change what Miami's got going on. So let's the this is a perfect segue into what our next topic is. So Miami made a trade with San Fran for that three spot, assuming San Fran's going QB. That also seems that Miami right. is committed to the Tua Tagovailoa hey, experiment or a possible blockbuster trade with a Draft. Deshaunee, a Russie, yeah, yeah. something. Possibility. It's an asterisk. Look. It's there. But it looks Look. like they're yeah. committed to Tua slash Jacoby Brissett is there if something happens or whatever. Regardless, they are committed to the quarterbacks on their right. roster. They go down to 11. No, and 12, then 12, or 12, 12, and then they go back up because they trade with Philly yes. to six. Yes. At that's six. Pits. That's Pitts. Talk to me. You want Kyle Pitts at number six. Yo. Okay. What do we know helps out a, uh, any quarterback, let alone a young quarterback who might have acquired accidental yips at the end of the season there? A might security have... blanket. Right. And what is a athletic freak who can block? who can do everything at the tight end position, who personifies the new, and I shouldn't even say new, because like Tony Gonzalez was a, was two decades ago and is in the hall, and he played the, the game, but it went dormant for a while, and there was only one or two guys every year. Now the tight end is a pass catcher. This is a pass catcher who can block and do different things, the Kelseys, the Kittles, the Ertz when he's healthy, like and more, the Joku. Like There's so many exciting dudes you could look at that have these high ceilings. Pitts looks like he's He's could day one game one be as relevant as like a top seven in the league on the physical gifts, right? Can he get the system? Can he get open? We'll see, but Holy crap. Would I be so jazzed if it's either him chase Smith as well. If, if we get one of those three pass catchers, so you're looking straight receipt. You want weapons. I want you're not coming catcher. into this or looking for with offensive the line. Pick. You're not looking for a linebacker. You're not looking for. Well, so if um that young man who's touted as like a next level lineman, so see well, Penny Sewell. No, that's not... Penny Sewell. 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 I say it wrong. That's embarrassing. If he is there, which he's not projected to be there, I think you could make a fair argument for protection, right? But if that, if we then didn't wield that later pick in the round on a pass catcher. I'm going to, I'm going to light something on fire because like, we definitely need a weapon. So if Pitts is there or Chase is there and you got to look real hard at that, but we bail on it, I'm frustrated as hell. If we don't get a skill position at, at, I think it's 18. So, but what I would be most excited about is two skill position mofos, get some linemen. You have multiple second round picks. Uh, There's just, it's a very exciting Miami draft. It's a very exciting. Yeah. You guys have, Three or four picks in the first 50 picks of the, of the draft. Three That's... in the first 50, and then you'd have to pull it up. There, there, there's so many. In there's the first... a lot. You guys have a lot. So with that, Craig's looking skill position. 
I'm going to go, I'm going to pivot to Mike in this, this crazy wild day of trade announcements. It was announced that Philly, who was in a, a spot above both the Dallas Cowboys and the New York giants trades back and trades behind both Dallas and the New York giants. What do you, what do you make of what's happening in Philly right now? Fuck if I know, man. <laughs> uh, I think they realized that they were in a draft spot of value. Um, it's the only way that I could describe it. They realized that at six, somebody wants to come up there and get a quarterback or get somebody. Um, so they're like, well, we are there. It seems like they're on the Jalen Hurts train. That's the ride that they're going to take. They're going to give it a go and see how it works out. So as it stands, man, it looks like that's kind of their path at the moment. They're riding with Jalen Hurts, and they realistically should be getting him weapons because that's one of the things that was such a big issue for Wentz there is that weapons were limited or defective, you know. Uh, but uh, I don't know. The thing, that th the thing that they have to be worried about is the top four weapons in the draft could be gone by 12. That's what I was going to say next is – if you're looking for weapons, you're at six. You have the opportunity to pick your weapon or right. get the remainder of well, they weapons. They gave it to us. They, they wanted and they, us. Yeah. they gave it away. They wanted and us to have it. That's it. Seems that way because They're right. So there was even talks, and I, I don't know how true this is, but there was even talks of them trying to get in, into the third pick to get Zach Wilson, which would just create another quarterback drama, diva-driven, just yeah. badness. Yeah. Is Philly arguably at this at this moment in time one of the more questionably run franchises? <laughs> yeah, uh, Washington yeah. In, Philly, in the NFL, Houston. It's kind of a few. You know what might have happened? The uh, drugs. So it, what's that? No, no, no. It's I, well, yeah, because rich people do drugs. <laughs> That's true. But what might have happened is that the families and people that own these franchises. They got really, really rich in like the last four and a half, five years. They, you know, I know millionaires and stuff like that, but they got all kicked into billionaire status, which is this own weird club. And I think some of them just go crazy over time. I think some of them just lose it. They're like, oh my God, I'm a billionaire. I'm in this rare air. I can do whatever I want. So instead of like hiring the right people for the jobs, they just start doing shit. And in a franchise situation there's 32 teams all fighting over a a very like hard to earn piece of pie that's worth a lot of money because if you win a super bowl you're you make dollars you get not just from the league giving you money you sell more shit you sell tickets you like you get so crazy it's such a good incentive i would think for the business-minded folks but that's what i mean there's probably just like some nepotism and some we know like snyder's an idiot like there's some just people that maybe aren't treating it like a business because they, they don't get it, but I'm so grateful that Miami has put a few pieces together. You were right, Pat. It's four in the fir first two rounds. Six, 18, 36, 50. There's a, like, I'm going to be so I happy. you guys got another one in the trade. I thought Two skill people, sure. a lineman and a backer would be great. That would be really, <clears throat> really great. And here's okay. the thing. So kind of backtracking to get to that Philly point Sorry. And, and kind of bring it full circle. No, no, you're good. No. Looking at the draft order right now, I would say that there is arguably realistically probably about five teams now ahead of Philly that could be looking to draft a ball catching skill player. Yeah. And there's four guys that I would say are top 12. So what are you doing? Like you're now that fifth team looking to get four at one of four guys. It just doesn't make sense. They got like another... Kyle Pitts. They Kyle Pitts. They knew they were out on. No, no, like, but they got another firsty out of it. So maybe it really is for them. They're like, you know what? We're going lineman no matter what anyway. So we weren't going to go skilly. Maybe I'm just saying, I'm going to play devil's advocate. And they're like, you know what we're going to do? We're going to murder. Cause I think they got the 22. So they're no. going to have two first picks or they got the 23. No, they got a first round pick next year. Next year. It's not even this year. No, I know yeah. that. I know that it's the 20, 2022 pick. Oh so yeah. What, yeah, I'm yeah. Saying is, gotcha. what if they're gotcha. thinking, what if I, I'm, I'm role playing Philly, I'm Philly. Maybe I'm not crazy, but what I'm doing is I like Hertz. I'm doing Hertz. 
We're going to win, you know, a hard six games. That's going to work out for us this year. I don't year. even know if you're going to win six. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. But I'm trying to think positively, right, for them. They draft linemen. They draft some protection, something at value, and they feel like I'm going to have a high pick next year plus this other pick. I'm just I, saying. I guess. I, I just the, – the draft is lottery tickets. And the higher the, – the higher you are in the draft – and this is why – the one thing that I will not fault Dave Gettleman for is drafting Saquon Barkley at two. Everyone is saying now, seeing what, what the Dolphins got to, to give up three – they were like, oh, is, is this the biggest blunder of Gettleman's career? Like, he didn't give up two to get to draft a running back. No, because he saw his guy, he went for his guy, and he believed in his guy. If you're at three, the first two picks are going to be quarterbacks, and you're like, I want Najee Harris, or I want Jamar Chase, then fucking stay there and get your guy sure. and, and stick to sure. your guns. That's, I mean, it... I, I think that way in fantasy football as well. And, and this you're, is a, well, yeah. a Craigism yeah. is it's a good point. You, if you're, if you're torn who to play, take your guy, play your studs, you take play your, your studs. So even if Julio Jones is in a downer and he hasn't produced in two weeks and you're like, mm, do I do Julio or Muhammad Sanu? I don't know. And you're like, well, Julio Jones do always yeah. do Julio Jones because the opportunity, the ceiling for Julio Jones is exponentially higher than it would be for Muhammad. But did Sanu. Miami have that actual board up and were they able to value chase over pits over let's say they well, want to and pass that's catcher. the thing. That's, that's the thing is Miami, I think is in a great spot for Philly being at, at six and to get the leftovers of yeah. literally three, they're, they're saying these three wide receivers and four, if you count pits, who could be essentially a wide receiver, but he's a tight end. You get your pick of what's left of those guys. They're saying all of these guys are transcendent talents. And you said, nah, not a one. And then you traded behind the giants who could conceivably have one of these guys fall to them. Just take and it. then you have to play that guy two times a year. Yep. Or the Cowboys could take one of those guys, and you have to play them two times. So a year. weird. That, they just they just went receiver. I don't think they're going to go receiver again. No, I don't think Jerry they're going to go receiver idiot, either. I'm so. just saying. But you know, anything's possible. If some for some godforsaken reason someone doesn't fucking draft Pitts and he falls to ten, Dallas oh, isn't going to let on. that down. Would let him be get so past mad. Us. He would be no, no, so mad. No, no. I'm saying for God, <laughs> so, like I said, it doesn't make fucking sense. But if I guess Kyle no, no, Pitts okay. falls like to if, ten, if you're going to draft him. Right. You have to. Because who who is the tight end that you're playing in Dallas right now? Does I, Dal- is, Blake there a, Jarwin? is there a tight end? <laughs> Ghost know. of Jason Witten. No, no, he's in Oakland. Or, so sorry, Las with, Vegas. With this wrapping this segment up, I love draft talk. I love it. Craig at six, the Miami Dolphins pick. I, I hope Pitts or Chase, but I, I'm I, let, let's go Pitts because I'm just going to get optimistic. I love it. I love it, Mike. Eleven. The New York football giants will take uh, with the 11th pick in the 2021 NFL draft. The New York football giants select Penn state linebacker, Micah Parsons. I would That's love that. I That's what you I would want. love that. You don't want like a Devont. You don't want Smith. You don't want the, the... I don't think he'll be there. I don't, I, I don't think those guys are going to fall. If anyone's going to be there, I think it, it would end up being Jalen Waddle. With that being said though, I think the, uh, acquisition of Kenny Galladay kind of really yeah. put us at ease That's true. in regards That's true. to receiver. Um, I Hayden feel like if we did not get Kenny yeah. Galladay, um, I, there was a high likelihood that we could have been trying to trade up in order to get our guy. Okay. Um, so at this point, if Micah Parsons is there, that's who I want. If Micah Parsons isn't there, I'm not a, I'm not afraid to trade back a couple picks and try and get some more capital. That's what I would realistically prefer as a Giants fan, is if Micah Parsons isn't there, I think we've been rumored with uh, liking Gregory Rousseau from Miami. I don't think he's a top 20 pick necessarily, uh, especially because he took a year off. I mean, so did Micah Parsons, but, you know, you can look at that for what you will. Um, that's that's where my head's at. Uh, if Edge is what you want and you want Gregory Rousseau, I think you could trade back to, you know, 17 and still get him if that's mm-hmm. something that they want to want to do you're happy um, about the linebacker though pat that's also sure. matches where He's you're at they, i mean they need He's help at so many positions i get well, it well the guy also ran like a four he ran four, like a five four, four. yeah and, and he like he's like six 245 
Isn't that crazy Florida. though? That's Are dumb. we? Is what's happening? We're just going to have to start getting used to that. I think because mm-hmm. isn't that what happens generationally in sports, right? So you go back to the seventies or before our time, and like guys could throw forty yards and run <laughs> five point ohs, and and they could gunsling, but not the way like Michael Vick was able to throw eighty yards on a rope, right? Now you've got the Mahomes in the quarterback position. You go to every position. Mahomes throws like, 70 yards flat footed, no yeah. movement. And he's he could like, throw it out of the fucking stadium. <laughs> no, but even the defensive guys, even the defensive guys, they're faster. They could jump higher, right? So nutrition, the uh, the the like the advances sports in nutrition and tech sciences. for sports, for training, we're going to keep being, and we're going to feel like the old guys in 30 years, we will be old, but we'll be like, can you believe that the dude that is 300 pounds ran a four, four? <laughs> that's dumb. That's, that's <clears throat> too much human to go that fast. <laughs> yeah.